What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles. Now today we are doing something very special and I'm very excited about it. But before I get to it, I want to tell you about a cool little fan film project known as ZombieCon. It's not really a fan film. When this thing gets made, it's going to be fucking big. These guys plan to release it in theaters across America. As far as I know, I don't know if they're gonna go the rest of the world. I hope they do. Now, I was approached by a gentleman by the name of Kyle who asked me if I could spread the good word about this because they are doing an Indiegogo to raise funds to eventually make a feature film. Now, the title is called ZombieCon and I've got the description here on my laptop and it's fucking beautiful. This is what it says. A group of cosplayers forced to transition into real heroes in order to save their loved ones must traverse a crumbling Los Angeles overrun with undead assholes. I kid you not, that's in the description. Undead assholes. Zombies, magic rock, superheroes, anime. ZombieCon is a special blend of action, adventure, comedy, drama, horror, thrills, heart-wrenching twists. The idea of cosplayers having to transition into real heroes is one of the main reasons why we all do cosplay. We want to emulate the heroes that we love, that we grew up with. So bravo. Now, like I said, these guys are doing an Indiegogo fundraiser. You can donate, say, a dollar, right up to $9,000 when you become an actual producer for the film, if you donate that much. Now, it's all different packages with what you want to donate. You'll see it there on the Indiegogo account. I'll provide the link below. You guys can go check it out. I'll also provide another link where you can see video updates from the crew and their concept and what they hope to achieve. So yeah, I really hope this gets off the ground because I fucking love the concept. I can't wait to review it, so good luck guys, all the best to you. Now like I said, this is a very cool episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles. I'm very fucking excited about this. It's a Morton Joe. I want them back and in my property. You will rise from the ashes. Then I will break you. Oh, wrong movie. Wrong mask, of course. <laughs> so yes, we're going to be pimping out an Immortan Joe mask. Now this was sent to me by a viewer by the name of Greg who asked me if I'd try my hand at repainting this. I said, fuck yeah, man. I love Mad Max Fury Road. I love the character of Immortan Joe and I fucking love his mask. Now we're not going to be over drastically changing the mask. It's just a matter of repainting it. The pipes, of course, have to be sprayed white because they're not black. We then will be weathering it with some black soot and some washes and whoop, the pipe came off. But yeah, the pipes come off like that. There we go. So yeah, this is like a vacuum pipe. I can't find one anywhere in Australia that's white. Apparently the original prop they use like Russian gas mask pipes. So that's a no go. So for the pipes, all I'm going to be using is just like a standard satin hell heirloom white? Heirloom white spray. Yes, from rust -Oleum. So that's easy, done, out of the way. And then we'll get to the weathering stage later. Now the actual mask. Now I've been researching the shit out of the screen used mask. And to me, it seems like we got to add a bit more depth to this. There is some dry brushing going on here, obviously with the teeth. These are supposed to be horse teeth, apparently, with the screen used prop. And obviously with the screen used prop, the mouth does open, but this is just fixed, which is totally cool. We can work around it. So the plan of attack is we have to prime it, even though it is already painted. Now, I just want to mention there is the logo stamp here of the company that made it, it's Kosa. I'm not grinding that off. I think that's quite disrespectful to do something like that to someone who put the effort in to make this. With the Hasbro stuff, you know, like this guy, everyone was asking, why didn't you grind it off? I'm like, well, I should have, but you know, I didn't. But in this case, when it's an independently made item, I wouldn't do that, it's just disrespectful. And I'm sure you guys can understand that. Now for priming, I'm just gonna be using a flat gray primer from Rust-Oleum. You guys will notice that I switch back and forth between a white primer, gray primer. To be honest, it's whatever's available at the time. I prefer the flat gray primer because it seems to adhere to plastics a lot better and a lot faster. It's a lot more efficient to use than the white primer. Then once that primer is dry, we're just gonna go in with a flat black. And that's pretty much all the spraying stuff done. Then we're gonna go in with some Model Masters paints. I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna bring this thing to life and add a bit more depth. And with that, let's get to it. Alright geeks, so the pipes are now drying out the back and they're a pain in the ass to spray paint. At first the paint didn't want to adhere to them, but now after three coats, they're finally drying. The paint is adhering, so I'm happy. 
Next step, now that the black primer has fully cured, we're gonna start some hand painting action. Now I've gotta be a bit strategic about this. I was deciding which parts I was gonna start off first. So I am gonna be starting with the bone and teeth areas. Now I just got some flesh color and some dark brown from Creator FX from Testers and I mixed them together to make a much more lighter brown. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be painting all the bone area and the teeth. Don't worry, the teeth will be lightened up at a later point. Then once that's done, I'm gonna be doing the metallic plated areas with the Model Master Silver. I am gonna be leaving this nose plate here black because I will be dry brushing that with the silver because to me, from what I see from the screen use prop, that little plate there is a lot darker than the rest of the metallic plating itself. The gaskets, of course, are gonna be hit with metallic paint. These sections here that sit under the gaskets, I'm gonna leave black, because from what I see, it just looks black. It just stays black. I may add a bit of dark brown weathering there just so it matches the rest of the mask so it looks a bit more organic and not fake. Now, once those stages are done, I'll be demonstrating how I'm gonna be using the washers and dry brushing and all that jazz. So that being said, let's get to it. Okay, so after two coats, the bone area is finally done. Now, I just want to point out that I've deliberately left all the grooves in the teeth black. And the reason why is because this is obviously a solid piece, whereas the screen used prop is multiple pieces, and the bottom jaw actually moves. As you see in one shot in the film of Morton, moves his mouth, and the bottom jaw comes open like an actual mouth. So having the black in there amongst the teeth gives it a bit of depth, makes it a bit more three-dimensional instead of just, you know, painting all the teeth and then filling it in with washes and all that. So the next step I did say was going to be the plating, but I'm actually going to do the dry brushing on here now. I want to get it all around here as much as possible. And if I did do the metal part first, I do risk getting some of the dry brushing white onto the actual metal plating. Now for the dry brushing, I'm going to be using the Create Effects Flesh from Testers. And you guys know how dry brushing goes. It's pretty simple. You know, you get the paint, dab it until it gets pretty dry on the brush and then you just start quickly whisking over all that detail and it's gonna bring up and make all this look very three-dimensional, give it a bit more depth. Okay, now after I applied the black wash, I then went in with some brown shoe polish and did the exact same thing. Just wiped it all over the bone area, wiped off the excess. Then finally, I'm going in with some black shoe polish. I know I used the black wash before, but this is more prominent. It's not as watered down because what I'm trying to achieve here is get a really dark sort of rotted bone type feel going on here. Then once all that's dried, I'm gonna be going back in with the flesh color from uh, Testers Create Effect and re-dry brush it. And then that's just gonna bring a whole new level of texture to that bone and just make it look really dry and rotted. So as you can see, I just poured some black shoe polish into a little bowl here, just wiping it on like so, and then just wiping off the excess. And that's really getting into those crevices there. Now I wanna mention, whilst in the process of doing all, you know, the dry brushing and the washes and all that for the bone color, I am going over the metal with all the washes that I do use and wipe off. So eventually it just builds up this rustic and worn look on the metal plating there. You know, I've gone through a lot, you know, it's a breathing apparatus. It's gonna have deterioration, it's gonna be rotting. It's, it's you know, part skull, part metal. It's gonna be corroded and rusted. So it totally makes sense to mix your browns and your blacks on the metal surfaces of this mask. Alright geeks, we are on the home stretch and pretty much done. Now before I explain 
the hose. That sounds really bad. I just want to mention that this is a matte clear coat. This has been applied to the actual face mask. I don't want to show you guys because, you know, do the big reveal and whatnot, but as far as I'm concerned, the face mask is done and we seal it up with a matte sealer because there is no gloss on the screen use mask whatsoever. It's quite matte, has a very nice dull matte finish to it. With that being said, let's move on to the hose. Now, like I said, I did have some problems trying to spray paint this stuff. It looks like a vacuum type pipe. It's like rubber, but it's got like a mesh kind of outer layer that's adhered to it. And it took a while for the paint to actually soak in and adhere to it. But once it did, it's not going anywhere. Now, in terms of weathering it, all I did was literally just spray some matte black spray paint on it and that was it. Like, hold the can away, just say if you, you know, there's the pipe, hold the can away about yay far and just spritz it all over it and it just soaks in and just kind of leaves a natural looking weather to it. So, I'm very happy with that. Now, in terms of the little gasket here, if I can get that to focus, that was, as you can see, some sandpaper there. Just sandpaper off around where the ridges are and that exposes the uh, actual steel part of the gasket so there we go guys it's pretty much done so now all that's left to do is to reattach the pipes to the face gaskets and we're done it's reveal time So thanks very much for watching guys. This thing turned out a lot better than I expected. Gregory, I hope you enjoy this my friend. I'll be boxing this up and sending it back your way over the next couple of days. Guys, if there were any questions, queries, anything you're unsure of in this tutorial, please drop a comment below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. As always, thank you very much for your continuing support and watching. And until next time, Geek, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. I want them back and in my deputy.